In tonight's presentation, I'm going to go over how to make the fan blade using Inventor 2019. We're going to model this part. Later on, you'll learn how to uh, do a detailed drawing. But for this lecture that's being recorded, it's only going to be the modeling. First, we start in their standard third. What is this third what? I forgot what they called it. Third angle projection, remember? Because we know this is an inch drawing. We turn on our planes. None of that changes. We turn them all on. It's always good to see everything. And the front view is this view. When we look at this part, would it be efficient to make it off the front of the view? Or would it be better if we made it off the side? Any preference? Six of one, half a dozen of another, possibly. So how you start, it's up to you. What do you think? Go ahead. Off the side? A little easier, you think? OK, let's do it off the side. We're going to go ahead and create, create it off the side. First thing I want to create is a center line center line because if we're going to create it off the side we're going to have a center line of reference to essentially do a revolve remember that so remember you could always turn it on first or later it doesn't matter because you could always take a line and turn it into something else a construction line for example or a center line okay Next would be to draw the shape itself. So I don't want that as a center line. So I turn those off. Go back into my line command. And I basically draw, I would say, a basic shape. Because I usually suggest start with a basic form and then you whittle away at it a little at a time. It's probably the most efficient way to model when thinking of future change notices you might deal with. Okay? You could always just draw the whole shape. I don't, in the grand scheme of things, I don't care, but I do care because I'd rather you do it the more efficient way for industry, not for just get it done. Now remember, when you work with somebody else's drawing, who knows what they did, right? Remember that. So here's this basic object. I want this object and this and this axis. I would like them to be connected. I want them to be collinear. All right? That way I know my part is flush against that back wall. Okay? I want that. Next, I'll go ahead and dimension my object. Uh-oh. There we go dimension my object, not collinear everything. The height of this is this, half an inch. We know that because that's right here. 0.5. So where did it go? There it is. The width of it, from here to here, is 1.6. <clears throat> and its location from the center See that it automatically jumped to diameter? It's 2.25. And that we know that because that's where that dimension is. And that is a shape that we're making. I went home just so I can look at it in isometric. Can immediately jump over and revolve it, and it knows what to do. It assumes 360, so everything's good to go. There's your basic shape. And in the field, we'd probably start with something that looks like this, to be honest. And then we would whittle away at it. Then we'd cut into it, add its chamfer. Depending on, in reality, if I had to really get picky, this, this um, rib would actually already be, be a big piece, and I'd be cutting away at it to make those shapes if I was going to machine it. That is where I deviate from physical manufacturing. And I try to make it a little easier on the CAD side. 
So now that's completed. The next thing we got to assess is over here, we've got this dimension, this dimension, we have this dimension, and this dimension. So this dimension here refers to the leftover space in the middle. This dimension here refers to this space here, the, the vertical space right there. So whatever's left is what's up here, whatever's left. We don't care what it is. The client is worried about the bottom piece and this piece, that's it, the, the center piece. They don't care about what this ends up being. So we don't either. You see the way I said that? We don't either. I've had students ask the question, well, we need to know what, what that chamfer is. No, we don't, because a customer has identified what they care about. We just have to follow what they're after. So when we look at what they're after, you actually will find out that both chamfers are 45 degrees when you do the math. Because 1.35, you've got this. What's 0 0.125 plus 0 0.125? Not that one, sorry. I was highlighting too much this guy. You've got 1.35 here. So you have a little gap here and a little gap here. So 1.6 minus 135. 1. Point, what did I say? Hello. I guess I don't have a calculator. We'll find out. I don't have a calculator <laughs> on the computer. So what is it? Point two five. Okay. And then 0.25, remember, because 1.6 is total length and 1.35 is this distance heat from here to here, that number, that number you just gave me, the 0.5, is it 0.5 or 0.25? 0.25 needs to be divided by 2. And you realize that that means this gap, that gap is 0.125. Five as well. So it's 0.125 by 0.125. So the tool inside Inventor to do that is something. It's under Modify. It's called Chamfer. When we get into Chamfer, you have several different choices on how to Chamfer. You have distance and uh, distance, so meaning that I could pick this outer edge and I've got the distance of 0.125, it automatically will knock off 0.25 in both directions because they're, they're equal. Then you have distance and angle, and then you have two different distances, meaning a distance A versus a distance B. In our case, it's equal distances apart from each other. We hit apply. This um, inner one you're going to find out if we do the math over here, the 1.1 versus the point one, I'm sorry, 1 1.6 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 divided by 2 is crickets. No. <laughs> 0 0.5 divided by 2 is a quarter inch. Now, what do you realize? We kind of did that a little bit here. This distance here, this vertical distance, is what? If half an inch is the total thickness, I'm going to wipe out a quarter inch. The remaining distance is also 0.25. So the, the inside chamfer is also the same equal dimension on each side. We hit apply, and there you go. You have your inside and your outside chamfers. Two specifications. Next, we try to build in the, um, 
I gotta clean this up just a little. Come on, you. Next is the rib. No, is it? What do we call this? A fin. They want to call it a fin. So the fin is made up of <coughs> as several dimensions. We have this dimension here. Okay. We have this dimension here. See that? Okay. We have some of the dimensions off here on the side. And you're going to see that they're reference to, um, to center positions of the sphere. That's visually challenging, but that's what it is. So if they're off the center. Now the thing is, you cannot draw, as you learned with the previous project, you can't draw on the top. By the way, am I done with chamfer? Did I miss anything? Looks good on this side. <laughs> what happened on the other side? Oh my God. So how do we fix that? Do we add new chamfers? Or do we edit the existing ones? Edit the existing chamfers and just add the back. Okay? Try to avoid making extra work and creating new chamfers all over the place when you don't need to. Because you can pick the back side and just get it done. Cool? If you want to know that it looks right, you can always go to view and split your view to see right through it. Okay? To see that it looks good. And it does. It's fine. And then you can end sectional view. That's under view. So when we go back to, to 3D modeling, from a previous project, you learned you cannot draw on a round surface directly. I can't put a plane on a curved surface. Planes are straight. My sketch planes, they're straight. I'm trying to emphasize it by rattling a piece of paper. Straight. They don't curve. Okay? So, there's a couple of ways to build in a plane to work on this. Personally, because I know that anytime you have a straight object, because we had a previous project on this, we've got a straight edged fan connecting to a curved surface. Anytime we have something physically straight connecting to a curved surface, I know it looks like a not so smiley face there, doesn't it? We know that it, we have a gap, right? We have those gaps on the side. I can't draw it well, I'm sorry. So I would rather build up here and then I could extrude to face and then I know it'll hug that spot without any issues, okay? That's why I really would want to build my sketch of this odd looking shape not on the surface or tangent point of this object, but up at its final height, which is 0.71 off its tangency, off the tangent height position. So when I come back here, I can add a plane. If I pick my circle, it doesn't know what to do, my round sidewall. I have to pick a plane for it to know what to do. And boom, it dropped the plane. Annoyingly, the plane is beautifully tangent to the surface, but not where I want it to be. Now, this is the part that you might find annoying. I don't know the software package yet that will let you do a double distance on it. You will have to put your next plane up. I notice that it really didn't go anywhere. See that? All that did was move. A trick of the eye. Looks like it went up, didn't it? Does it look like it's going up? Does that look like it went up? If I go to the front view, no, it just shifted over. It's it's an imag uh, what do you call it? A visual um, game there. You actually have to go back into plane and pick this plane. If you drag your plane up, we learned that I think last week and the week before. Drag your plane up, 
then you can get the numeric value of what you want it to be. In our case, 0 0.71. That's the plane you want to draw on, this one up here. And if I go to my front view, I'll see that it's up here. So I know it's not a visual issue. It, it really is there. It just doesn't look like it's in the right spot. It is in the right spot. My other planes that I had to build to make this plane, I would recommend taking visibility away from those. And even from, of all things, our top plane here, only because they will become visually challenging to you if you have too many planes on at the same time. So this is the plane I want to build on. I'm going to create a new sketch on this plane. So I have to do this, guys. So when I look at this, this is where the fun begins. I see this, so I know I have this shape with a sharp edge. You can see the sharp edge. It's got a rounded corner. Why? Because it shows me that. So it's rounded here, but it's got a sharp edge. And its parameters, it has a line this way, a line this way. This is this distance. This is this distance. So we've got multiple distances. To work with. So to replicate that here, I'm going to clean up the drawing a little bit so I could look at it. And that, of course we have to account for this. The width of that sharp edge is 0.07 and the distance from the center is 0.31. So the, the edge, this edge is not at this position here. It's actually 0.31 over. So the best way to do this is to create a construction box like we would if we were really constructing something. We try not to attach it to anything, so let's go ahead and make it out here somewhere. I'm doing it out here so it won't attach to anything. See that? So this dimension from here to here will be the 1.08. This dimension is the 0.66. I honestly don't know what the what the real decimal value is, so I am just going to go with what I see. Um, so that's your basic form. We're going to throw one more line in, in this equation. That's this line, the 0.31. So now we have a generic layout. This position, whoop, let me get out of there. If I move it here, that's what I want attached to this. Okay. So what I would want to do is turn my plane on, my, not my plane, my axis. I want that visible so I can take this and this and make them collinear. That way, uh, then I can drag this down into here. Now this also here has, has a positional value from the front. From where this chamfer is to where this edge of the blade is, that's 0.08. So now I put in one more dimension down here from here to the blade. To where the blade will start from, from the edge of the chamfer to where the blade will begin. And that's 0.08. Why? Because that's what it shows me there. Okay? So that positions this item. Now I'm ready to actually draw lines and arcs. So I can turn off my construction geometry and my first line I'm going to draw. And that's down here. From there to there. And that is going to be 0.07 wide. Why? Because that's what the drawing tells me. The width of the blade from end point to end point is 0 0.07. The circle over here on this end, that's this guy, 
has a radius a radius of 0.03 all right and now comes the fun part now remember how we did tangency lines in a different project where I said draw it off in La La Land and bring it back that's what I'm going to tell you to do here when it comes to these arcs just draw them out here anywhere and then bring them in because it's much easier to work with them if you do it this way because when you drag this in you'll have a little more control of where it goes for example you want this and this to be tangent okay and then you can control down here you can because that's endpoint you want this to curve see how it moves now to that tangency then you can drag this down here and lock that point in there then you don't want to drag this line down all you have to do realistically zoom in close and when you go to trim where is trim it's under which tool bar or tool box is it under create no project geometry no it's under modify and it looks like a scissor cutting something there you go now it didn't catch that one but that's okay and it looks like it's got one more little spot there we go so that trims off the first one notice I'm discreetly working with each one by itself I'm not trying to get everything done all at once now this radius is right there 1.03 now it doesn't seem to think that it's locked in so the question is goes on tight why not it's not locked in yet maybe it will lock in a little later let me drop this guy in and drag this arc over same thing I'm gonna pick this hold my control key down pick this Go to constraint and pick tangent. Uh oh. I must not have held my control key down. Pick this, pick this. Uh, it says it exists already, so let's find out <coughs> where. A little tough to control there, isn't it? So I guess technically it is tangent. There it goes. It is tangent. But you see how it's wild? It's going everywhere. So what it really needs is the radius. It needs this radius and I pop that one in. Now remember inside Inventor what's beautiful when I pick another dimension as my reference it is tied together it's a beautiful thing other software products don't do that which is extremely annoying now I can extend this out and trim this back so that lines good something's off with this one this is the one it's not it's not locking in so the question is what what is it that it that's that's causing it to not lock in see the other ones locked in I don't think it's tangent in a normal way I think it's attached but not tangent so I'm gonna delete that this time I'm gonna do something a little more controlled it's a smaller arc that I drew pick these two and make them tangent now I'm gonna trim that back and drop in the dimension
Now what's interesting, you see this function of x? I don't know about you, but I was expecting it to fail. Because the function of x implies a dimension that I, doesn't exist anymore. So let's see if I update, if I get a fail. I don't. That's weird to me. To me, that's a bug in the system because this one should have failed. Because dimension D17 no longer exists. I deleted it. So I find that odd. But I will leave this alone. It's okay. I can't fix Inventor. I can just work with it. And trim this <clears throat> trim these elements off. And there's my little arc. There's my shape. When I go home, I have it in isometric, and now it can go and extrude the way we have in the past up to next, for example, and it hugs on the body. Now to, to see that, remember, up to next, to see how it hugs to the curve? If I picked a distance to, uh, not to, um, distance. See, if I drag this thing up and down, we've had this conversation, whoops. Eh, I touched too many things. Hold on. Let's do that one more time. If I drag my arrow down, you'll notice the gaps. Okay? I drag it down. There's that gap. See? So to avoid that, I just say to next. And <laughs> I don't have to eyeball it. I don't have to be perfect about anything. I just pick to next. When I hit OK, that's exactly what I get. And then the last step is the same as you've done in the past, which is creating a pattern. You're creating a revolved pattern. How many ribs, guys? Was it eight? I think it was eight. Yep, eight fins. And we hit OK, and voila, you're done. That's how you would make this model. A lot of it is looking at the drawing, a big chunk of it, not a lot of it. You have to look at the drawing to assess which dimensions to use. And that is something that so no software package will do for you. You'll have to do that yourself. So, And that concludes this lecture on FanBlade using Inventor 2019.